Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today to talk about the human journey and what's hard, what's meaningful, how to get through it. And another piece around what it's like to orient in life toward being of service. And conversations I've had with men around being in service, it can come up that, you know, that's kind of a strange lens or it's weak or, you know, how do I be in service and still feel powerful? So my guest today, Matt Hunter, welcome, Matt. Hello, hello. Uh, Is an amazing example of a human on the journey who, like he said, he's not claiming any perfection. He said this to me before we started, Um, but really has attention on how to be a better giver, a better lover, to really leave people with value when you spend time with them. So thank you so much for being here. Mm, Thanks. I would say I am, I don't even know if I'm an example, but I'm someone who's (laughs) trying, I'm trying to figure it out. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm I'm very much, uh, on the court and I don't have a lot of answers. I have some questions uh, and I have, you know, some, some wins along the way. So yeah. that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I love it. Thank you. Let mm-hmm. me give you a quick bio intro and then we'll keep going. And just on that note of questions versus answers, I think questions are so powerful and to be inside questions, you know, looking at life versus always thinking we have to have the answers. I think there's, there's so much power in that. Totally. Yeah, totally. And, and I also love that you're going to do the bio. That's, that's pretty great. I, yeah. I oftentimes don't prefer to do my own bio. So this is, <laughs> I love I it. I love it. Awesome. I love it. Good. Okay. So Matt is an entrepreneur, a social activist, an artist, and is currently president of Founders Pledge Inc. Previously, Matt co-founded the Wi-Fi marketing business Turnstile, which was acquired by Yelp in 2017. And somewhere along the way, Matt co-founded the intimacy development publication, Cambio. He's helped bring the morning dance party movement Daybreaker to Toronto. And before all this, Matt was an artist making electronic pop music under the moniker Natural Animal. There must be a good story there for Natural Animal. (laughs) Uh, You know, I think, honestly, I don't, I actually don't. We we were named another name before that uh, called the Wheel Wells. And then we had a manager who one day was like, you know, I think that I came up with this name. I think it really fits for you guys. And that was, that was kind of it. You know, normally there's a story behind things like that, but in there's that actually particular no case, <laughs> there, there is no story. We were just, yeah, but it, it definitely fit the label of, of uh, my best friend and I at oh, the time. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a quite a range of, you know, artists to activist to entrepreneur. And I think there's something in that too of, somehow you've allowed yourself to actually live all of those parts of yourself. It sounds like. Mm, Yeah. Um, Yeah. You know, it doesn't, they they seem like very disparate things. And I think there's a reason for that. You know, I'm just like, I find myself excited to have the full spectrum of human experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know, I think 
oftentimes I, I, I've only found, yeah, I found that, uh, you know, I think after a handful of years, I'm like, okay, I'm interested in telling a new story. I'm interested in spreading something new. And, um, that's not the case yet with, uh, with my current project for Founders Pledge. Uh, and I, I love that work very much, very mm. much so. But I think, yeah, I think that's just in my DNA is like, I think some people can really hunker down on one thing for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and other people are just interested in, you know, trying out completely different things. And it would, it would save me a lot of grief if I was one of those types of people. <laughs> but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not. What what has happened as a result? It sounds like there's been challenge in loving to create new things. Yeah, I mean, you there. There's a so I think it always starts with like a, a naivete about you know what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just like, oh, that sounds like fun. Right. I think let, like let's go give that a shot. That'll be yeah. easy, maybe. Uh, and then of course you uncover it and you realize, wow, this is really difficult. And this is why not that many people try to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, in that process of stumbling around and figuring things out, uh, you know, you get a lot of things wrong. Uh, you underestimate a lot of things. Uh, you experience a lot of pain as a result of that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's all like fun. I think it's all part of the journey. Hmm. Okay. So your, your lens sounds like you can make it fun, even if there's pain and struggle, but also I imagine, um, I don't know, you seemed really excited today to, to talk about what's been real, what's been hard, what's been meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, all right, if, if I was to ask you a question that feels really meaningful to me, it's like, mm -hmm. what, what do you want men to know that comes from your own journey of having tried new things and struggled and, you know, been on the path of trying to become a better human? Hmm. Wow. Great question. I will buy myself some time on that. <laughs> um, gosh, I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot there. I think one piece is, uh, something that I kind of recently, uh, picked up that I was doing in my mind is just, I, I feel like I've been constantly working towards like some sort of promised land where there's no problems or like only easy problems to deal with. Yep. Uh, and, and life is, you know, way better than it is right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel, yeah, in the last handful of months, I've gone through this adjustment of like, actually, you know, happiness is inside of you. So mm -hmm. you got to start you know, getting grateful. And life is kind of a never ending series of problems that you need to solve. Like, it doesn't matter how successful you are, or, you know, whether you live uh, in the woods, or, you know, in Manhattan, like, the problems follow you around. That is part of the human experience. So I, I've been just, yeah, I think that that's a really interesting one that I've learned in real time in the last couple of months. Uh, and I'm hopeful that that adjustment will lead me to a lot more uh, happiness and just like gratitude for everything that I um, that I have and everything that I have done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that one feels that one feels really big and kind of recent for me. That does feel big. And and how different? I mean, and I again, I'm a student of life as well, so I'm not claiming any perfection or anywhere near mm. it. But how different life becomes when it's like, oh, here's a problem. I wonder how I can face this with as much, you know, integrity or grace or self, I don't know, alignment with truth, you know, mm -hmm. versus like, oh shit, something's wrong. If I were mm -hmm. only better, this wouldn't be happening, you know, that whole yeah. trip. Totally. And I, I think there's definitely room. I mean, there, I'll speak for myself. There's room for me to adjust my expectations, mm -hmm. to, to at least try to start enjoying that process and to expect that process to happen regularly. Uh -huh. Like to just, ex oh, this thing is happening. This thing didn't go the way that I wanted it to. Like, you, you know, in, inside yourself, you can hopefully get as close to 100% uh, as possible of like things going right for you. But yeah. outside of yourself in the, in the real world, 
you know, the, it's completely unrealistic to think that everything's going to go 100% your way. It might, you know, it's got to go a little bit my way, a little bit your way, a little bit that person's way, a little bit right. this person's way. Uh, and, uh, and, and so making that adjustment inside of you, mm-hmm. uh, to know that the, you know, the problems are going to keep coming and maybe you can start to enjoy the, the, the solving of the problems, uh, and, you know, enjoy the, the nice moments when you have them and just expect, expect them to come with a pretty, you know, relative, like regular frequency. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and rather than looking at what's wrong with me such that this is happening, sounds like mm-hmm. taking on this lens of like, okay, how do I, how do I want to navigate this? Totally. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the other things we talked about before we started recording was your, I mean, this, there's a kind of a vagueness to this but it also feels really powerful to me that when when i asked you what you really wanted to talk about you were like i just i want to make sure people get value Mm -hmm. and um and i said wow okay so that's not always a lens that people walk through the world with right some people are like here's my expertise this is what i want people to know this is what they need to know and with you i was saying it seems much more like there's this orientation toward being of service Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I just, I think it's important ultimately. I mean, what is a podcast? It's a group of people that are uh, listening to guests that you curate mm-hmm. uh, that will hopefully bring value to their lives, you know? And so I, w- I would like to, you know, bring them as much value as we can possibly give. Them. Yeah. Um, otherwise, what am I doing? You know, it's like, I want to have some fun. And, and hopefully people will leave thinking that it was worthwhile listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So if we, if we take that thread and we look at not only this podcast, but your Mm -hmm. life. Yes. Is that a way that you orient as you're making decisions? Like, okay, how could I be of value here? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to more, uh, I'm, I'm 32 years old. I, uh, you know, I'm in a relationship with this wonderful woman, Jane, and we've been together just over a year. Uh, so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty early in this, in this journey. Uh, and I think that the origins of kind of my shift, uh, trace back to, to a pretty scary moment in my life. Mm. Um, yeah, about four years ago, uh, I had left this this startup uh, that you had mentioned uh, that I was building with my best friend. Yeah. And uh, two months after I left that, I had this life threatening illness uh, wow. called Guillain-Barre where essentially you, uh, you, you can go more or less uh, paralyzed to death. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's yeah. About 20% of the cases uh, that that happens with. And, Ooh. you know, fortunately for me, I, I mean, I, well, maybe backing up a bit, there was just a period of time where, I was diagnosed, uh, mm-hmm. and the doctor basically said, "In the next four weeks, because uh, that's how long it progresses." Yeah. Um, you know. You could be paralyzed <clears throat> in the next four y- weeks. Yes. Yeah. Essentially. Wow. Uh, and that sounds terrifying. Yeah, it, and it was incredibly terrifying. Um, and in that moment, I, I felt a lot of shame. Uh, mm-hmm. I felt a lot of shame that, you know, my life to date had been pretty. Um, focused on, on myself, wow. uh, you know, making music so that people could think I was cool or girls mm-hmm. thought I was cool mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, making a startup to, to earn respect and, um, that kind of thing. And so then I, I basically had this realization that, you know, I have a lot of, uh, gifts to offer other people and, and to offer the world. And, you know, if I made it out of this and I was healthy, uh, that I would, um, try to spend all of my time, uh, you know, trying to help others. Cause yeah. I felt like at that point I was taken care of. Like I, I got, I felt like I got to a point where m- me, my needs, yep. uh, I could kind of take them off the table to a certain extent, yep. obviously not fully. I mean, I still really do try to listen to my soul and, uh, you know, um, give it, give it what it needs. Yep. Um, uh, but anyway, so that, that was kind of, that was the impetus of that. Uh, it took me about a year to recover. Wow. Um, I'm totally fine now. 
uh, which is amazing. great. Like a full yeah. recovery, not even impacted by that anymore. Uh, occasionally, I can feel some some uh, issues in my hands and feet, uh, mm -hmm. and they bring up they bring up some fear. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I think that that's ultimately what led me to Founders Pledge and led me on this journey of of helping other entrepreneurs give back mm -hmm. uh, because. You know, they helped me with my my journey of giving back, and then I felt, well, you know, it's super important to do this, especially if you, you know, done well on a business or something like that, uh, because there's just there's so many challenges that we're that we're facing that yeah. you know, if your money is donated in the appropriate way, you can do a lot of good with it. Um, yeah. So, and I was looking on the Founders yeah. Pledge site; it looks like two billion dollars has been either pledged or donated. Is that right? Yeah, we've, we've now got just over $2 billion committed uh, to give to charity. So those are pledges. Wow. So, so those are like founders from some of the top uh, startups in the world making uh, effectively legally binding commitments to give some of their personal money to charity uh, if and when they sell their business. Uh, Amazing. So it's, yeah, it's really exciting. And, and there's about 1400 people have made this, this pledge so far. So wow. um, yeah, I feel I feel, I feel great about that. And so that, yeah, just trying to, you know, like for example, today is also my girlfriend's birthday mm -hmm. and I, you know, normally I have like a morning routine, uh, but this morning, you know, I just wanted it to be all about her and just right. whatever she needed and just, and, and it, that actually felt really nice. It yeah. felt really nice to do that. Uh, it sounds so like I'm, I'm, I'm a... trying to shift, I'm trying to shift in, in as many ways as I can. Yeah. I mean, right. Just back to this whole journey of suddenly being faced with, oh my God, you could be paralyzed in four weeks and mm -hmm. recovering. And it sounds like that was a, a major shift of huge. Yeah. Of your, it said, you said like a wake up of your attention and where, how you had been oriented in life and really seeing, oh, I've been putting attention on myself and what, what would feel good to me rather than okay, how can I be of service and how can I bring value? But I love also, right, the fact that you have a morning, uh, you know, morning ritual and all of that. Like, mm -hmm. clearly, you also are taking care of you. Yes. You get to make these choices of, oh, it's her birthday. So now it can be all about her with the support totally. of your own foundation that you've been also taking care of you. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's, what's uh, I don't know, I think what's what's implicit in there is that, I feel like I feel like I needed to get to a point where my needs were met, you know, where I feel taken care of. Yeah. Such that now I can focus much more of my time yeah. on other people. Okay. Um, that's and there's, huge. there's yeah, and maybe just <laughs> before we dive into that, I have yeah. like something really practical yeah. that uh my therapist uh got me to start doing and I, I would highly recommend it. It's such okay. a such a cool little trick, which is that Anytime you are in interaction with people, so you go about your day and you're in interaction with them, try to have that conversation and, and tailor that conversation and how you are in that conversation and interaction to them as much as possible. So like your sole purpose in that conversation is like, what does this person need? What would they, you know, like to hear? How would, you know, would they like to see me smiling? Would they yeah. like me to be as, as warm as I can? Um, I mean, that's such I, I can assure thing. you this will be a game changer. It is, it's really nice. Yeah. Well, right. It's such an interesting one because there are a lot of men who identify with you know, the nice guy syndrome. And some, mm. in some ways, men may already be doing that. Um, mm. However, a, yeah. right, I, I, it's an interesting one to think about. Okay, so if your attention is normally on yourself or what you can get, then a shift could be, all right, how do I engage in this conversation, you know, mm -hmm. such that I'm not just paying attention to myself. And if your attention is already on, how can I take care of others? There's a little bit of a different shift of, all right, how can I co-create, maybe it's co-creating something really mm. inspiring mm -hmm. or interesting here where I get to be a part of it, kind of like you in the birthday. Like I get to be a part of it. Normally I do my ritual, my routine, and I'm also caring for this other person in front of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gosh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Cause I mean the, the whole, the whole nice guy thing I think is 
a very delicate balance, right? Yeah. Of, yeah. of uh, having, you know, your own desires and your own needs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I definitely see a possibility in a world where, uh, you know, you can interact with people in the, in the manner that I described. Yeah. Uh, and you can also, you know, state your desires and your needs yeah. and you can make sure that your needs get met. And I think it's Love. just like, I think, I think the difference or the subtleness there is just like how, how firm are you around your own needs and mm-hmm. your desires mm-hmm. uh, and not, not letting those, like having the courage to speak to those, especially yes. when they're, they're in question. Right. And, and I think when you don't have the courage to speak to those or ask for those, we're walking around as these kind of empty, starving vessels, right? Or Mm -hmm. humans. And so then uh, that dynamic of trying to get filled can happen. I mean, I'm curious because you said something so powerful around um, once you got your needs met or once you recognize that your needs could be met, then you could start turning your attention. So I'm curious, how did that happen? Hmm. Um, Hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think uh, I think a big part of it is just a perspective shift. That's you know? what I was like wondering. We, it seems like, we live, yeah. yeah, we we live in. I mean, assuming most of the listeners are are in North America, um, we have so many of our needs met already. Yeah, uh, the vast majority of us are in the top one percent in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have. Uh, Every, you know, almost everything is available to us. And of course, yes, I, I like, I'm going to fully acknowledge that even, even amidst all of that, we live in a world dominated by scarcity around money. Yep. Uh, you know, but I think with some perspective, especially a global perspective, mm-hmm. uh, considering how many people are in poverty and what life is like in so many other countries around the world, yep. uh, we already have so many of our needs already taken care of. Yeah. So I think it's just like a shift to appreciation relative to all of the other human beings on earth. Um, yeah. you know, and it's, and of course, of course that's easy for me to say from a very privileged position. Uh, but I, I do think it's true. Yeah. And it is, that's, I was, I was kind of wondering if you were going to say, Oh yeah, all these things happened. Or if you were going to say, Oh yeah, it was a perspective shift, which is where you went with it. And mm-hmm. Yes, you have a privilege. I have a privilege. But but most of us and most of the men listening here, we really look at it. There is some kind of privilege around. Um, I just think about food, even right. That people mm. are starving around mm-hmm. the world, even in the United States as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that oftentimes I have to consciously sit down and and think of gratitude for this food. It, it's not like a natural thing that arises for me. I have to be like, oh yeah, I'm, I want to be grateful for this mm. because I, yeah. I think we're born into this way where it's like, oh, this should just happen. You know, we, we should just be fed and clothed and housed. And we, we all work, most of us work really, really hard to make that happen. So there's, there's that simultaneous struggle, but mm-hmm. like you're saying, there's a perspective shift around appreciating what we actually have. Yeah. And how do you, I'd love to learn from you on this. Like, how do you ensure that you're expressing gratitude? Like, do you, do you catch yourself or is that just part of your ritual? Like, cause the, I, I'm super fascinated about this mm-hmm. and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting cause I have a, I have an eight year old. And so I, it's funny to look at well, what the root of this is. Like I make it a point to look around and be in awe of the fact that we live on a planet and that I have a body and that I get to eat at restaurants. Like there's some kind of orientation I have toward being in awe of that. Mm. And I don't know where that came from. So, Mm. you know what I mean? It's like, all right, how do we cultivate? And, And maybe each of us in a different way for someone, it might be, appreciation for someone it might be awe i can see it living in different ways Mm -hmm. um Hmm. that's really great yeah that's i mean that's that's an incredible perspective because when i hear you say that i 
you know, I think of my own mind and oftentimes it has a tendency to skew negative and, and, and think about like, you know, what I don't have or what yes. I, you know, what I'm lacking. And, I'm not saying, yeah. that, like, I'm always in awe, but I think, right, that's the counterpoint to the, rah, 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 this thing. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Uh, and I, I feel like uh, uh, the last maybe month I've had to take my, um, my gratitude practice into the garage and, uh, you know, really detail it and, 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 and kick it up a notch because uh. the, you know, I was just doing like maybe a few, uh, you know, a few things a day that I'm grateful for, like kind yeah. of like the bare bones. Yeah. And now I'm like, I, I write on a piece of paper, like 10 things I'm grateful for about wow. Jane. And, and then 10, make that shift? 10 things you- about the world. Um, just because I, 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 I feel like my therapist and I, like we identified that I was not, yeah, kind of like what I alluded to earlier, where I kind of felt like, you know, the answers were outside of me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's so crazy because I just have so much, like I have such a rich life. I have an amazing partner. I have wonderful friends. You know, I live exactly where I want to live. Uh, I I'm, you know, on purpose with my work mm-hmm. and yet why, you know, why was I feeling those, those feelings? Yeah. Uh, and I, so, you know, that's, that's something that's in progress. Like I, yeah. I'm 100% not the happiest guy out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm like, I'm pretty decently happy. Uh, but I got a, you know, I got a long way to go there. Uh, or, or maybe not. Maybe it's just right around the corner. Right. Um, we don't but, know. One of, but one of the things that, that I've changed and I've already started to see some, uh, you know, some, some, some uplift there is, is just getting way more serious about gratitude. So I write those things down and then I get on my bike. And when I bike to work, I, I try to spend as much of that bike ride as I can, just like naming things that I'm grateful for. Wow. Um, and that, that is, has actually helped quite a bit. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, to me, what this says also is, again, along with the expectations of things in the outer world should be a certain way, I think we can also come with expectations of like, if, if I'm going to be happy, I should just feel happy versus mm. it actually does take some work to be happy or to recognize that, we can be happy with whatever we have or in, you know, different states of emotions and mind. And and that there's this cultivation practice. It sounds like that you're doing that I find that I need as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, if I could try to boil it down, it's like the outer world, you know, you can work furiously to make the outer world exactly how you want it. And it's never going to happen. Yeah. It's just never going to happen. But, uh, so, so sorry, no, but, but so, you know, turning to the inner world seems like, you know, that would, that would make a lot of sense, uh, because there is a lot of control that you can, you can exert over your inner world and your well being. And there's lots of tips and tricks that I'm sure plenty of people on, on this podcast and, and many others have talked about. Yeah. And it, it goes so deep too. I mean, gratitude is one of those things that seems it's so simple and complex at the same time. And I think also the fact that we as little people walk around like sponges, really taking on the perspectives and beliefs and even body postures of the people around us. And so, you know, I love that you're talking about being in therapy because it does take some, whether it's spiritual work or therapy or coaching or there are often ways that we don't realize we're stuck or we can feel the stuckness, but we can't tell like, why is that happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can't uh, speak highly enough of coaches and therapists and, and relationship therapists. And I mean, it's, I think it's really wonderful, wonderful work and has, uh, saved me a lot of grief and, and Mm -hmm. definitely improved my life a lot. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for, you know, folks like yourself doing the work that you do. Mm, Thank you. Mm -hmm. If we were going to end here, which we're not necessarily, but I can, I can Mm. feel that this is going to be bigger than sometimes it is. So if, (laughs) if, if you were going to leave this conversation and not say something that you think would give men value, right? Like if there was something Mm. that you would regret not saying, Mm. what might that be? Mm. 
Okay, well, the thing that's coming to my mind right now is that almost everyone, pretty much everyone, I think it's probably a safe assumption, uh, is like quietly struggling, mm -hmm. right? There's yeah. like desperation going on inside just about everyone. Yeah. Uh, and so I think keeping that in mind is just really, it's really wonderful, you know, because if you can get yourself to a place of like pretty goodness, yeah. uh, then, you know, you can, you can have a lot more compassion, uh, in the conversations that you have with, with other people. And if you get your, uh, you know, financial resources, you know, even just slightly beyond a place where your needs are met, um, then you can start to use some of those funds to, to do other things, to, to help other people in, in more challenging positions. And, and I feel like it puts the, it puts your struggles in context. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can also just relax a little bit and know that right now in this moment, uh, you know, one, maybe 150 million people are feeling insecure about a friendship. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, so that, that actually really helps, you know, it just kind of like normalizes things yeah. and, uh, for me anyways, and it helps me, uh, just bring a lot more light, uh, and goodness into my interactions. Mm. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that. And really thinking about, you know, everybody's struggling with something. One of the things I often teach men who I'm working with in my courses is this idea of shared reality that if you're feeling self-conscious or kind of awkward around a woman or it could be a man, you know, if you're um, romantic with men to really think about like, okay, this person in front of you was, you know, w wore diapers at one point and had pimples and felt really weird and awkward in high school mm. and, and also is going to die someday and has family mm. issues and all those things. And can we stop thinking that everyone out there has it more together or feels more belonging than we do? You know, there, there's all these ways that we, I, I, at least I do this and I've seen a lot of my clients do this, make it such that people out there are struggling less than we are. And then there's shame around that. It's crazy out there. It's crazy in our minds. And I love that you have relationships with men where you guys are admitting that to each other instead of thinking, okay, I've got to keep this, you know, this, this will make me look weak or somehow. Mm, yeah, totally. Well, we, we, um, yeah, we, we gather, I'm a big fan of, uh, men's groups and, and men's work. And so I, that's a part of my life. And, uh, yeah, actually in a men's group with, uh, Dom and Brian who have both been on this podcast. Mm. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, they're really great guys. And, you know, it's that, that, that's a beautiful thing that has totally changed my life. So if there's an opportunity, uh, for you to join a men's, men's group, yep. uh, I think you might like it for several reasons. You know, the male camaraderie is amazing, mm -hmm. uh, but going to the gym, uh, and kind of having like a weekly gym practice for your emotions, uh, has helped me so much in my relationship and, and just managing myself and, and in, you know, in work and everything. So, um, so powerful. I, yeah, I would, I would highly recommend it. I, I double click on that. You know, it's really to not f feel or think you're alone and to hold those things, I, I, you know, the suicide rate and the depression and anxiety rate for men is really, really high right now. And I think so much of it has to do with this isolation and, being taught, okay, we've got to man up and keep this to ourselves. And as you know, right, as you start doing this and talking more freely and realizing, oh, you've got this too, then the shame dissipates. Mm, yeah, totally. It, it, and, and if it doesn't dissipate fully, it helps a lot. You know? Right, I'm and not it saying gives, fully. <laughs> yeah, and it, gives you, and it gives you permission to kind of lean into it and feel it. Exactly. Um, which is really... Yeah, really nice. I mean, that to me, I, that's the only way I know how to move through emotions is just to go directly into them. And yeah. then you might get some insight uh, that, you know, you had been blocking out. Yeah. Uh, and then you might feel a lot better on the other side.
Yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. one of my own of those this morning where the little part of me that was just sad and lost and heartbroken and hopeless came out. And I was just like, God, shouldn't I be done with this already? It's been decades. And the person I was doing my practice with was like, okay, there you go. Like that's you mm. just acting like everybody did with you when you were little. So what would it be like to actually accept those parts of you and not try to push them away? And it's mm. so, it's so hard. <laughs> to, oh, it's to very hard. Gone. It's that, that, I mean, and that's, and I think that that's why most men's group models are, are weekly uh, because, <clears throat> you know, you really, you're, you know, your whole life you've been conditioned a certain way and yeah. like, you know, to go against that, it takes a lot of practice. And, you know, I've been doing uh, men's groups for um, coming up on two years now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, you know, still relatively early in my journey. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's just still so challenging for me. Yeah. So challenging. Uh, so I, and I suspect that that's just a lifelong journey. <laughs> yep. Yep. I would agree. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for uh, not, you know, for recognizing that you are on a path and that I love what you said in the beginning. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm an example, but you know, you're, you're a human being who is, willing to learn and grow and wanting to be of service and that goes a long way so thank you mm, thanks for having me shanna this was an awesome conversation and yeah i feel like we we touched on some good things and i had a lot of fun so okay. yeah thanks again uh, and do you want men to find you and if so where <laughs> uh yeah i mean for sure like if you're if you're an entrepreneur or you're you know you're working at a, a a startup or something that's doing super well, definitely go check out Founders Pledge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just founderspledge.com uh, and, and make a pledge, make a commitment to give uh, some of your proceeds to charity um, if and when those shares turn into money. Uh, we're also hiring a fair amount. So if you're you know, interested in the mission, uh, which also includes uh, all kinds of support around giving, uh, for entrepreneurs, uh, have a look at our website. We post all of our research publicly, uh, all of our uh, available roles. Um, so go ahead and have a, have a look there. I'm unfortunately not on social media, uh, so there's pretty much no other way to find me. <laughs> find me. Uh, but if you want to send me an email, uh, it, it's just matt at founderspledge.com. Uh, I'd love, love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, hope you have a, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word alive, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.